and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the hazards from the volcano, some of the health hazards. And there are two primary hazards, as you all probably know by now, the gases that can be released from the volcano, and then there's ash. And the way we, and we have, um, and so the public needs to understand, everybody needs to understand about these two hazards. And as far as the gas goes, specialized respirator, cartridge respirator masks are required for those that are basically used in industry. And the department has not been recommending cartridge respirators for the general public because they're complicated, they require special training, and there's a whole host of issues about them. Also, the masks are usually used when you know the exact air concentration because they only work within a certain range. And they can't be slept in, the masks are not made for children. So we, for a variety of reasons, we are not recommending cartridge respirators for the general public. And we have discussed this with our with other agencies as well as the International Volcano Agency, as well as one of the manufacturers. So nobody is recommending cartridge respirators for the general public. Our recommendation, so then the question comes up, well, Dr. Bronstein, now what do I do? And the, and the answer is remove oneself from the exposure. That's the treatment. We don't want people to be in some sort of a device in the exposure. We want them out of there. So that's really our recommendation. And that has been our recommendation. Now, the other component that we may have to deal with would be ash, volcanic ash produced by eruptions. And uh, this material is not really dust, but it can be look like as dust, but it's not dust in the true sense of dust per se. Now, filter mass, like an N95, and the reason they're called N95, they theoretically reduce 95% of the particulates that the mask receives. These can offer help from the ash exposures and decreased ash exposure. They have to fit properly. They, uh, people like me who wear a beard, that's not the, the, the perfect fit, but these will offer protection from the ash. And these can be purchased from a variety of places, and these are the N95 masks. Now, so far, I don't think we've had it to the point where we need, need, people need to be using these, but this is a type of mask that would be used for protection from, vol from volcanic ash. Okay. So that's sort of the two major a health hazards from the volcano, in addition to rock fall, to burns, etc., and a whole host of things. So that's uh, where we are at the current time. Can I just get you to go back up a little bit? Um, obviously, extraction from the zone is ultimate. Uh, there has to be some middle ground. There are some people who are going to go in there uh, for whatever reason to reclaim their possessions. They don't have one of these great masks. Is there any in-between ground? Uh, we've heard people say, get baking soda, put it in a wet t-shirt. We, we, we hear all these different things. Is there anything that can help that's in the middle of those two scenarios? Not that I know of. Uh, I'm sure there are, are lots of different ways that people are saying one can do, but I don't know of any one of those methods that I can recommend as a physician. And I understand it's very difficult. I was out there today. I went out to the area, and it, it's very uh, poignant. And I was, I got it. And there's a feel about it. It's empty. There's no people there. And yet the people can't be there because we had meters. We were checking the air levels, uh, and uh, everything was okay. So I'm certainly not not sensitive to all this but there as far as i know as far as anything homemade for the gases i don't know of anything 